Hey guys, so for once in my life, I'm early. I'm like so early, like what time is it? Where's my phone? Do you have my phone? Another, other doctors, none of the other students, none of the professors are here yet. So like we're literally just waiting outside the lecture hall. So I'm really excited to present. Sorry the audio kind of is messed up now. I had an external mic on it, but it kept falling off. And so I have to have Austin fix it for me. So sorry, we're back to like happy audio. Waiting out here, I think. My dad's gonna record some of it for me, so thank you, Dad. I'll talk to you guys after. Uh, doing events such as this is something I'm really passionate about because I think it's an interesting perspective to hear from a patient side of you because I've met doctors that I know have only ever seen the doctor's side of it and not really like the human side of it. And I'm really grateful that I've had some amazing opportunities with doctors. But not only like in the hospital, but also like when we went to Washington DC together, like she saw like us as real people and not just as patients. And we get to have that really special relationship of like in and outside the hospital. So I'm really grateful that I've had that. And that's not a lot of opportunities that doctors get to have that with their patients. So, and for as often as we see doctor care, it's a really great thing to have. So I just, really am grateful to her for that. I am 19 years old and I have osteogenesis imperfecta. I have type 3, which is the second most severe type. And there are about nine types now and there's constantly new types being discovered. This is something that I was born with and I know like in the medical textbooks it's often described as like little bone disease, but it's actually a connective tissue disorder which is caused by a lack of collagen, which is one of the most abundant proteins, which causes, which is basically the glue that holds everything together. And that's something that I'm greatly lacking in that causes my bones to be very fragile, affects my muscles and height, and I also have scoliosis. I've had about 100 fractures throughout my lifetime and about 20 some surgeries. I am a college student at university. I'm studying marketing with a uh, concentration in digital marketing. Something really unique that I have the opportunity of doing is I have a YouTube channel where I do makeup tutorials and raise awareness about disability. And I actually have almost 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> um, and I've had a really amazing opportunity of sharing my story with some pretty big media outlets like uh, Inside Edition and uh, Daily Mail. I my story has really been reaching people from all around the world, but there's nothing really that's more powerful than actually like speaking in person to people, especially uh, future doctors. The biggest tip is for future doctors is to have compassion. That's one of the things I love most about that is your compassion for patients and um, just treat them as people and not just like, oh, I have another patient today. And no matter what you're doing in life, and if five years down the road you decide medicine isn't something for you, compassion can take you anywhere, and no matter what field that may be. Um, as Dr. Kieran mentioned, like, just like going in the congressional cafeteria, and people just like not watching out for others, and just having a disability, you really see life from a different perspective that not a lot of people get to have. And for me, a lot of people, they feel sorry for me, and I, I really don't like that because I think as a society, we think of having a disability as such a negative thing, when in reality, I really, it's one of the greatest blessings that I have because I have such amazing opportunities. None of my friends get to speak to future doctors and <laughs> travel the world to speak with congressional members and so I really try to think of uh, the positives to having you know what I've been given and I really just try to view life the best that I can and you know just because I try to have a positive attitude doesn't mean that you know I might get frustrated or upset but it's all part of being human and just trying to go through life and those things that I think a lot of people don't realize is um, when they meet me and see all that I uh, go through on a daily basis. Uh, there were some doctors that had thought that I shouldn't have been born. My mom and my twin brother 
also have osteogenesis imperfecta type 3 and so it's pretty amazing that my mom was able to have twins and so knowing that one of the things that we also live by and I think it's really important for doctors is just because it hasn't been done doesn't mean that it can't be done and so I think as a as a medical student and reading textbooks, you know, you see like the technical parts of it and like what is common and you you may come across things that are not common and so I think it's really just important to take in that human side of it and just really getting to know your patients. Um, I love watching YouTube videos before. <laughs> 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 like, what kind of like inspired you? So I definitely experienced both. But so I started getting into YouTube. I was seeing girls doing these makeup tutorials and I really enjoyed doing that as well. But as I was watching these videos, I realized there was like nobody with a physical disability doing these videos. And I think as the beauty and fashion industry goes, it's something that's very fun to see a young woman with a physical disability in that industry. And there's definitely been progress being made, but there's a, a long way to go, and I think that I try to be that new face and uh, to society and realizing that, you know, we're all human, and people say, like, you know, like, oh, you look different, and to me that's surprising because none of us in this room look the same, and um, I may have a disability, but we all have our differences. I really just try to inspire people and be that new face and that's really how I got into it just like the positive messages that I received really outweigh the negative comments uh, that I receive and that's uh, like a daily reminder of you know why I do what I do and I I think it's just I just know I've gone through so much and like seeing like people and I think having a disability really like get to know people and like whether that's good or bad and so, like, I've just had this, like, I don't know, idea of, like, just not, like, caring what other people think because at the end of the day, like, none of that matters. So I just do it. I just do it because I love it and I enjoy it and I know that it's reaching a lot of people. Uh, I'm actually a fan. I've seen your videos. So. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I wasn't 100% sure enough it was you to come say something before, but I'm very glad. <laughs> So, but my question is, what have, um, you mentioned that you like seeing, um, have you had doctors that you haven't liked seeing, and what did they do, and what should we not do? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's really enough time for that, but you know, I'll try to like give a few uh, scenarios. So, a lot of it is x-ray experiences. So, when I... Part of having a Y is having a lot of x-rays hmm. because that's how you like discover where the fracture is and how severe that it is. And I've had like x-ray technicians, like I'll tell them like, hey, I have a Y and my bones are very fragile. And they'll just come up and they'll like grab my arm or like grab my leg and it's like, you know, like please don't do that. And like sometimes I have to be mean but like it's for my own safety and like so that I don't further injure and um, just like really listening to your patient because not every, even if you meet someone with a Y, like their limitations or like severity may differ from the next. So just like really listening and like knowing because nobody knows you best than yourself. Listening is the best that I can do and just offering, you know, just being there for them because as I mentioned, there were doctors that had said that I hadn't been born, I shouldn't have been born. And so I obviously didn't know that until I was um, older, but I just like offering support in whatever situation that um, your patient may come to. And one time I had a fracture and my previous orthopedic was out of the country doing mission work and my arm was really, really broken. And I 
we went to the doctor because I really needed something done about it. It was really broken, and that was before we had met that he had put this brace on me, and he said, if you just hold your arm like this, it'll just, you know, it'll heal itself. If you just hold it like this. And it's like, the minute I left that office, I took that brace on. <laughs> and, like, I lived with a lie all my life. Like, I know how this works. I know, you know, what helps with a fracture. And it's like, I think, just like really thinking about the plan and how you're going to best help your patient before you pursue it and really seeing their overall health and their overall ability because what may work for one patient doesn't work for the next. And so just really communication and listening is really important.